It's time to meet the Rail Riders. Welcome back to Meet the Rail Riders. I'm Jim Coles with Graham Johnson, a pitching coach for the third season here. I know that behind you, the national championship we earned in 2016, our team ERA was under 300, so you don't win without pitching. I don't care if that's Little League, high school, college pros, or even AAA ball. But you started as a college coach and then made the transition to a, a pro coach. First of all, what's the same at any level? What's the most important adage that you can come up with? I mean, the ability to pitch, have stuff, command, um, navigate, you know, base runners, no base runners. I mean, it's ultimately the same game, just uh, the talent level and then the challenges change a little bit. What about like replicating everything and trying to say, not, not to get technical, but just same release point, same landing point, kind of keep everything on the same? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a certain elements of that. Uh, I think the more you dig into pitching and learn about pitching that you kind of find out that like nobody actually really does repeat the exact same pitch. Right. all the time but the guys who can get to a certain level of consistency certainly give themselves an advantage let's go back to those college days when you were coaching at small level colleges you must have found it gratifying because you wouldn't be talking to me and doing what you're doing today so where was it at that level that kind of progressed you because like all these players going up another ladder as a player you're doing it as a coach yeah I think uh, being in a mid-major uh, school kind of definitely helped on that we weren't getting you know the blue chip recruits uh, you know we weren't competing with Vanderbilt built for the same pitchers uh, right. in terms of recruiting so we had to identify the pitchers that we felt like could come to our program and then we really had to push player development which is where I think you see the wave of there's a lot of college coaches in professional baseball now and I think um, you know a lot of professional organizations kind of caught on to that of the coaches at the mid-major level there's something they're doing if they're good because they're not getting the top recruits they have to rely on player development right your, your third year here in the first two years uh, feathering your cap for the organization top five in ERA in the league top five in strikeouts sometimes they go hand in hand they don't obviously have to so when you're grabbing a pitcher are you depending on the pitcher trying to pitch to contact not to contact and how do you try to get them to speed things along where I know when I used to pitch, everybody used to tell me, throw strikes because your outfielders aren't going to be paying attention if you're behind the count all the time. Yeah, uh, throwing strikes is kind of a given, uh, especially <laughs> yeah. at this level. <laughs> right. uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I think there's a difference. Uh, pitching to contact kind of gets this negative connotation. I think I like to try to reframe it for our guys, whether they're a power pitcher or, you know, a ground ball pitcher, whatever that may be, uh, is, is forcing swings, specifically early in the count. Um, you can't get strike three if you don't have strike one and two first, so obviously there's a premium on that. That. Um, but it kind of depends on the guy. Um, sure it does. Uh, are we focusing on the type of contact quality that they get? Some guys were focused a little bit more on strikeouts. Other guys were focused more on making sure that we're limiting the free bases. Um, sure. And ahead. then it's going to be a combination of all three and uh, for all those guys of how good can they get at all three of those. But most guys are going to be a little bit better at one or two of them. How, how, how do you get a pitcher to, to get over a bad outing quick? I think it's probably easier if you're a relief pitcher because you could be out there the next step. Yeah. Um, I, I like to tell it like whether the guy you know gave up a bunch of walks or or gave up you know some hard contact like it's not going to be the last one you flip on the tv and the best in the game have bad ones it's how much distance after that bad one can you put between the next bad one Correct. because it's coming like this, right. this game's very humbling uh maybe not as much as golf but it's right there on that level um and i think that's the way i try to frame it to those guys of like it's not going to be the last bad one that you have now let's get back to work and put as much distance between that last one right. and the next bad one that's coming. Well, great philosopher Lawrence Peter Yogi Berra said 90% of the game is have mental, so that's what you're basically talking about. I'm trying. Graham, Old Forge, you might see him walking around the streets of Old Forge getting some Italian food, even though he's looking pretty good in the belly there. Graham Johnson, good luck this season and Thank welcome back much. to the area. Steve, Appreciate we're going to